shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. Whosoever he be of thy seed in their generations that hath any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. For whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach. A blind man, or a lame, or he that hath a flat nose, or anything superfluous, or a man that is broken-footed, or broken-handed, or crooked-backed, or a dwarf. And ben I, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabziel, who had done many acts, he slew two lion-like men of Moab. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing, and thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof and it shall be an habitation of dragons, and a court for owls. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there, and find for herself a place of rest. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons in all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind fulfilling his word. They shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are their names by their towns and by their castles, twelve princes according to their nations. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass, that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and we? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, her wise ladies answered her, Yea, she returned, answered to herself. Have they not sped? Have they not divided the prey? To every man a damsel or two? And he cometh unto the disciples, 
and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What, could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time, and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came, and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them, and went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. Then cometh he to his disciples, and saith unto them, Sleep on now. Sleep on now. Sleep on now. Sleep on now. shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto faithless. Then cometh he to his disciples, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, sleep on now. Notwithstanding, thou mayest kill and eat flesh in all thy gates, whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God which he hath given thee. The Rab Shakeh said unto them, Hath my master sent me to thy master, and to thee to speak these words? Hath he not sent me to the men which sit on the wall, that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? And it shall come to pass in that day, that the Lord shall hiss for the fly that is in the uttermost part of the rivers of Egypt, and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. Yet she multiplied her whoredoms in calling to remembrance the days of her youth, wherein she had played the harlot in the land of Egypt. For she doted upon their paramours, whose flesh is as the flesh of asses, and whose issue is like the issue of horses. And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, 
Inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till you go thence. And when ye come into an house, salute it. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness, treasures of dark, treasures of darkness. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness, and in him is no darkness at all. Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants which are before thee to seek out a man who is a cunning player on an harp. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. The dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. I went mourning without the sun. I stood up and I cried in the congregation. I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. Neither shall the shepherds make their fold there, but wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there and satyrs shall dance there. And the wild beasts of the islands shall cry at their desolate houses, and dragons in their pleasant palaces. And her time is near to come, for the Lord hath a sacrifice in Bozrah, and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. And the unicorn shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls in their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. And it shall be an habitation of dragons, and a court for owls. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow, the screech owl also shall rest there, and find for herself a place of rest. For there was no rain in the earth. The plowmen were ashamed. They covered their heads. Yea, the hind also calved in the field, and forsook it, because there was no grass. And the wild asses did stand in the high places. They snuffed up the wind like dragons, their eyes did fail because there was no grass. Thou camest out from Egypt. All that openeth the matrix is mine. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Rama was there a voice heard. Then I turned, and lifted up mine eyes, and looked, and behold a flying roll. How doth the city sit solitary, that was full of people? How is she become as a widow, she that was great among the nations and princess among the provinces, 
How is she become tributary? She weepeth sore in the night, and her tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers she hath none to comfort her. Then went he out of Leah's tent, and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the images, and put them in the camel's furniture, and sat upon them. And Laban searched all the tent, but found them not. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. I will incline mine ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy couch, and go into thine house. The Lord showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe, and the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. A guy that I was taking some teaching from, he's emphatically stating on his Facebook page that it's a hoax, the Mandela effect. We, we're, I'm trying to call this the Bible effect because it's, it's mainly focusing in on the King James Bible. It's, it's weird how it's, how it's manifesting itself. And they're saying that it's always been like that. But today, I, I think if after today, because I just checked, it hasn't changed overnight but it has changed recently in the book of Genesis, right on the first page, okay? Right on page one, okay? Right on page one in Genesis of all things. I mean, the very, the very foundation of the whole Bible. You know, there's, there's, there's the, these you know, anomalies that we're gonna get into. I'm gonna let Mike explain it like he did with me. I couldn't really sleep last night because of the fact that uh, I was, I'm, because I'm processing all this, I'm trying to, like you, I'm trying to figure it out. Plus, the other big thing we have to talk about today, uh, persecution for, for, you know, if you see something being slapped by mommy dearest, totally unfair. And completely, you, well, I'm going to reserve those emotions until we get into this. Okay. And here's my guest. Mike Horsey, are you there, sir? I am here, sir. Wow. Mike, I'm just going to turn it over to you, just like the phone call yesterday when you called me. And I've, and admittedly, folks, the reason I've been sitting on this is for a day till I could get Mike on is because he's the one that found it. I want him to explain it. I don't think I would do it justice, you know, in my explanation. That's why I just said, well, now nah, it's better to wait for him today. Okay, Mike, take it away, please. I've been impressed, personally, to go back and actually study the Bible from beginning to end, and I started doing that with my wife the other night, and we started in the very beginning in the book of Genesis, and I've been praying and asking the Holy Spirit to, to point out anything that is anomalous or anything that has changed that doesn't make sense, and I believe he did do exactly that. When you look at the creation event, and, and many of you have memorized this verse, especially chapter 1, uh, verse 1. And here's what it says. It's supposed to say, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and then go on the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. But let's hit the brakes. Screech, screech, screech. If you've got a Bible, a King James Version, go back and look at verse 1 in Genesis chapter 1, and you'll see that it's no longer heavens with an S. 
it's heaven singular. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void. Now, not only is it singular there, it's also singular in verse 9. And God said, let the waters under the heaven, it's supposed to be heavens, be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. The heaven. Verse 14. The heaven. It says the heaven. It doesn't say heavens. Make no it sense. It says the heaven. No, you don't, no one says okay. the heaven. The heaven is not. Nope. Never seen that before. Does not say that. It never says that. When you get to verse 14... It says, and God said, let there be light in the firmament of the heaven. It's not supposed to be heaven. It's supposed to be heavens to divide the day from the night. Okay? And then he's basically talking about the creation of what we would refer to as, as the universe, which has the stars in it. It has, the, you know, all the other planets that God had created, whatever form they took, the solar systems and so forth. And, and talking about in verse 15, God said, let there be light in the firmament of the heaven. It's supposed to be heavens. And I always remember it being heavens S. And by the way, if you have a new King James version of the Bible, it still says heavens. In all these places makes, we're pointing out where it's now. Mm -hmm. That's like bottles and wineskins. It's like the new King James is more the traditional one now. And this has got yes. some weird language version now. Uh, the, it's, 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 more, uh, it's weird. It, it's weird, but the heaven. Uh, have you ever heard, this, you know, it's like God created the, the heaven and the earth. God, uh, let, okay, so it's all the way through here, verse 14, verse 15, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. Mm -hmm. Okay, please continue. All right, it's all over the first page. Okay. Okay, now we, we're going to go through this, and we're going to show that this is a contradiction uh, in the scripture because well let, let me just finish up here when you get to chapter verse 17 and chapter 1 it says the same, same thing it says and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth he's talking about the, the sun and the moon but it's supposed to be heavens Mike wouldn't, I mean, it, wouldn't, James, wouldn't in the old yeah. English it be you know I'm sorry to interrupt but wouldn't it be in the old English um, instead of saying the heaven, if you were just going to do heaven singular, wouldn't you say in the firmament of heaven? You wouldn't say the heaven. I've never seen. Right. The, I've all, I've right. seen heaven before. Right. Heaven singular, uh, without the the in front of it. And here I remember uh, that that it was heavens. You say the heavens or heaven singular. The heaven does not exist in the English language until now. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Until okay. now, yes. And, you know, in verse 20, he's basically talking about the, fly, the fowls flying across the firmament, the open firmament of heaven or the heavens. But it actually says of heaven, singular. Now, all of these places here are all basically spoken of with an S in the New King James. And as I remember, 
that is the correct way for it to, to actually read. But now let's look at something here, and I just want to explain something, and we're going to look at something else here just just a moment. But when God is talking about creation, he's talking about the creation of what we call the universe, uh, the stars, the moon, and sun, and so forth, which is, uh, you know, our outer atmosphere or beyond our atmosphere. And then he's also talking about the creation of the atmosphere right around the earth, which the birds are flying in. You could say that's the first heaven. The second heaven is where the stars and the solar systems are, and beyond that would be where God dwells, which is referred to as the third heaven later on in Corinthians. But now, to, when you say heaven, when you actually say heaven, you're only speaking of one. That means that there's only one heaven. Well, the why heaven. is it when you go to verse 2, the, heaven, the heaven, right? Now, that means there is none but except that one. Right. Well, why is it when you go to verse 2, the chapter starts off, thus the heavens and the earth were finished. Now we're talking now, about heavens plural. Now it's normal. Now we're referring back to everything mentioned in chapter 1, but now all of a sudden it's plural. Go down to verse 4 in chapter 2, and it says, these are the generations of the heavens, heavens. The heavens. and the earth. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what it was supposed to be, okay? Uh, the generation of the heavens and the earth when the Lord created, uh, when, the, when the Lord, when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. The heavens, now, you yes. You can't have it both ways. Mm -hmm. But I mean, exactly, Mike. Now that, that, when you say the heaven, it makes no sense, even in English. I mean, just as, as what I'm saying is it makes no sense. In, in, even if you don't know the Bible, it makes no sense. You say the heavens, yes, the heavens, of course, the heavenlies. Sure, the heaven, no. It's never been in the King James Bible. I testify to that, that I'm, I'm your witness, at least one. To, uh, why in chapter 2, you talk about being in, uh, a, a satanic insult. Chapter 2, the first verse, thus the heavens. Oh, man. If anyone says they, they remember, if, if anyone says they remember the heaven... I'm going to smack you upside the head, and I'm going to accuse you of not knowing the Bible at all, because that there's just no way. We've been through this since we were kids. We know, we know that we know. Good thing we're older, because you know it's harder to pull the wool over the eyes. beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2, and the earth was without form. You and I were talking yesterday, Zeph, and it, you know, being a little bit older here, it, we remember, we have a lot of memory here in the past. <laughs> we can remember back when we learned these things, and now it's saying something different. I mean, this verse, many of us memorized in summer school, I mean, right. excuse me, in Sunday school, rather. Yep. Many of us remember that. And so it's, it's just like in your mind, you just remember that. It's very, very clear. But you can't have heavens, and speaking of singular, one heaven, and then in the next chapter, all of a sudden, it's plural with an S, have ends. Well, that's a contradiction, you know, basically the first chapter. But let's take a look at the New Testament and let's look at what Paul had to say. And this is Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, chapter twelve. Okay. Mm -hmm. In in Second Corinthians, chapter twelve, Paul makes mention of this. Now, many people think that he was speaking about himself in the third person. I tend to think so as well. He may have been talking about when he was stoned and, and God brought him back to life, essentially. We don't know for sure. But he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2, he says, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth, uh, such a one was caught up into the third heaven. Now, Paul is speaking about three heavens in the New Testament. Okay, now, we, we see the creation of the first two in Genesis chapter 1. 
you know, the, where the birds fly, our immediate atmosphere, and the universe as we de describe it, where the solar systems are, and beyond that is where God dwells, which would be the third heaven. That's all congru congruent. So to refer to uh, something that is plural in nature as singular, you have a contradiction there. And it was never actually heaven, it was always heavens. So something has changed, something has altered, and Zeph, you're calling it the Bible effect, Something has changed. It's now the so Bible. We've read this before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, to call it the Mandela yeah. effect is it's it's kind of like that's kind of almost like trivial compared to the Bible. So the Bible is more important. So I'm going to coin the term the Bible effect, and and maybe it'll catch, maybe it won't, but at least uh, it, it feels better to me because the other one feels like kind of conspiracy theory. Look, here's something cool to think about on the internet. It's you know what I mean. It's secular stuff. But when you're talking about the Bible, you're talking about messing with, you know, we're, we're charged with keeping God's word. I mean, we all accuse each other of breaking it, but, uh, you know, because we just love to have a circular fire squad as Christians, don't we? So, but at the same time, well, <laughs> at the same time, we really, we, look, I think we talked about this last night. You and I were talking about how we may be called, this may be our calling to preserve the word. This is... I know you're going to reread it again. I'm thinking about reading it from beginning to end. Once again, just, just uh, you know, asking the Holy Spirit again to reveal things. I can't believe that this gold mine of changes was sitting there, you know, while we were talking about other verses, and it was just like this giant cache of wrong words, of changed words. And then you, and then you prayed, and the Holy Spirit, you prayed that God would show you and then you got into the chapter right in your face. It was the changes were there, right? I mean, I, you must have been just floored when you saw that first page. Well, I was. I was. And I hate to say this. I really hate to say this, but it gets worse. Okay, turn. I want everybody, if you have a Bible, I want you to turn to Genesis chapter 3. Now, Genesis chapter 3 is one of the most significant chapters in the Bible because it is one of the very first mention of the Messiah that was to come. Okay? But I want you to see something here because there have been massive changes. And these changes are done in a way to discredit the deity of God. This is, this is really, really bad. All right, now we're basically looking at the story of the serpent talking to Eve. Uh, I'm going to start at verse 3. Eve is answering. It says, But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Look at what the serpent says. And the serpent says unto the woman, You shall not surely die. And if you're reading the King James, look at what it says. For God knows that in the day you eat thereof, that your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as God, small g. It never said that. It said, be like God. You can't change from the person of God to small g God. There is no other God except for God. The Bible said, you shall be like God. Now, if you change this and you say, as God, the implication is there's other gods out there, and there are no other gods except the true God. Look at verse 15. Okay, look at verse 15, and it says, And I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Well, her seed is the Messiah. The her seed is Jesus. That is uh, supposed to be a capital S, because you were, this is the first reference to the Messiah, period. And then, it, worse than that, it says, It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Well, the it and the he and the his is the same. It's supposed to say, he shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. Zeph, I would never refer to you as an it. Understood. answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and 
the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Therefore also, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. I've noticed that in the King James, every place that God is mentioned, the Lord God is capitalized. But when he when he's referred to as he, he is no longer capitalized. In the New King James, he is. So it's almost like trying to, to take God and move God down to the level of just anybody else. Mm-hmm. Okay? When you get to verse 22, it says, uh, the Lord God which is capitalized, behold, the man has become as one of us. Okay, now in King James, the us is no longer capitalized. It's just one of us. Now, who is God speaking to here? Well, it seems that God is having divine counsel among himself, the persons of the triune nature of God. Some people think it might have to do with the angels. But us should be capitalized, God having a conversation. It's just like in Psalms chapter 2 where God is actually counseling with himself, in a sense. So it's very, very interesting that these places where it used to be uh, referred to God was capitalized are no longer capitalized, which is taking him down to make him like anyone else. Well, that's, yeah, um, you know, I, these, these kind of concerns, I mean, if, if there's this much in the first three chapters, you, you know, just imagine... I imagine you'll find, well, we will find, those of you out there will find, I mean, we're going to, there's probably a lot more. I, you know, I kind of, I was 50-50 on it. I kind of thought, well, we got a couple things like bottles and we had, you know, wineskins and versus bottles and a couple other places. And I thought, you know, stuff was another thing that stuck out that I, I know I hadn't, that it, it wasn't there before. And, um, you know, we were kind of marveling at what it means and trying to look for an old Bible, look for, for evidence that, uh, you know, that, that, that used to be one way and go, go back through uh, newspapers or go back through anything we could find to try to find a Bible, try to find where it said wineskins instead of bottles because bottles clearly makes no sense. And now we turn up the first page and then we just open to the first page of the Bible and there's like four or five of them right on page one, the heaven, the heaven, the heaven, the heaven. And um, I, w- I will say this, I have never seen that before, and, uh, and I, I can testify to that. A persecution, you know what I mean, that there would be great persecution for the followers of Jesus, uh, the Messiah. And um, so that, that kind of already sets you know, the stage, in a sense, for the entire conflict, which is what, what it is. It's a conflict. <laughs> Between the people that hate God, I guess, and people at war with God, and, and those who are with God, you know, there's this natural antipathy between the two, and um, you know, we see it throughout the entire Old Testament and New Testament, and and, and beyond, and into today, and uh, it's it's and now we have this spiritual warfare going on, where it seems like the the King James Version is the one that's being you know picked on the most. I can't, you know, I think it's you know, what it is. It's just trying to pervert. The word, but when you say the heaven, you're in conflict with chapter two. You're you're contradicting because you're saying there's the heaven. That's it, the heaven. And you can't just say, well, sometimes it's plural, sometimes it's singular. It's just not a great translation. You can't really say that since it's always been the heavens. It's the heavens in the New King James, and and finally, chapter two, uh, the heavens, would then contradict chapter one, the heaven. And, you know, they say that, well, you know, people that really, really King James people, they say this Bible does not contradict itself. And it can't contradict itself. And God's word can't contradict itself. Mistaken the, the, the aversion with paper and ink on it to be the word, where the word is really God. It's really the people of God. It's really written on our hearts. That that's the word. Mistaken paper and ink on it to be the word, where the word is really God, it's really the people of God, it's really written on our hearts, that's the word.
and I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. I can just feel like, in a way, they're trying to just psychologically rape us, in a way. You know, they're taking this thing that people rely on, they're taking the King James that most people say all the rest of the translations derive from, and they're, they're focusing on, you know, so whatever their magic is, whatever their technology is, however they can do this, on, on hurting that, but then getting people... It's like they want us to accept it. It's almost like, you know, like soil and green. They want to feed us humans and see if we'll accept it, right? They want to feed us little changes throughout and get us to, or, or get a lot of us to say, it's never changed. God, you know, the Word of God never changes. So that could, that's impossible and reject that out of hand without studying it, without looking at it. And then, um, you know, in other words, get what, have that kind of social pressure going on. So eventually, you know, when these changes stop, everyone assimilates and accepts the new, slowly, I guess, you, it's, it's slowly um, perverting the word, slowly turning the words into little lies, inconsistencies and get us all to accept something that we they wouldn't accept it, it's sort of like turning the heat up on the frog slowly slowly so the frog doesn't object only some of us caught it remember that Hoth said we will change it very slightly here a word there a word and nobody will even notice and finally when we have it all together when we have all the little changes in one big package, if you read it all together, our doctrine, and not theirs, will be there. It's sort of like turning the heat up on the frog slowly, slowly, so the frog doesn't object. Only some of us caught it. And now it's all over the internet, and it's everywhere. Now, this is not going away. And now that I see more of these kinds of things going on, you know, that I thought 50-50, this was going to tell you, 50-50, the, you know, we'd find a few things and then we wouldn't see any more. Well, Mike, you're very much involved now. You're, you've, you've, you found right in your face, page one. It must have been God telling you to go to page one. Don't you think? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. I started right at the very beginning and started reading it and I was trying to remember what it used to say, or as best I could, you know, and was hoping and, and believing that the Holy Spirit would bring to my remembrance all that he said. And immediately I thought, well, wait a second, it never said, never said that in the singular. And that doesn't fit with what it says in chapter 2. So what, what's, something's wrong here. And, and clearly there is a contradiction here. It was not heaven, it was heaven's. Right, I, I remember it as heavens too. I mean, it's, it's huge because it's all, over, it's all over page one. It's like they're just sticking in your face just to see who can see it and who can't. You know, like, let's, let's really mess it up and see if they catch this one. And then people don't. And um, it's going to get harder and harder for them to do that. It's, Mike, at some point, do you think, you know, like we've talked about the, the movie They Live with Roddy Piper and the, gla the, the big fight with the glasses? And, you know, it's just right. like a 20 minutes of fighting on a movie. That's a long time of fighting. About, that scene went on 20 minutes until finally the guy would... They almost went to the death because the guy just refused to believe there was any alternate reality. And they put those glasses on and then he could see, finally. And maybe that's kind of the way it is. Without, we don't have the, devi the cinematic device of the glasses. But... Um, it's the same kind of thing. It's like people just, you know, I mean, it's, it's getting, it's almost like a game of chicken, you know. It's, it's getting more and more and more obvious. At some point, there's going to be a collision. And 
I think there's something else going on too. I think that we, we as humans, human beings, you know, we have. It doesn't even matter. You could talk about guys in jail. I mean, they they're pretty depraved. A lot of them are in jail, but they still have a code of ethics in a way. They still understand that certain things are right and certain things are wrong. Innately, we understand that, and we think in terms of fairness. And if if God is allowing Satan to be released to start the great deception, which I think this this certainly uh, is a part of. Uh, do you think that Satan is going to uh, just say, no, I can't touch that, or he's going to have certain parameters? No, nothing is going to be off limits, because you're talking about a fallen entity that has no sense of fairness whatsoever. Right. I remember listening to a deliverance minister talking about uh, one deliverance that he did, and he called this demon up on this woman and asked her how he got access to her, and the demon admitted that he got access when she was a a young girl and she was molested and you know she was like eight years old and the deliverance minister answered something to the effect well that's not fair the demon answers him well fairness is something that you learn from your God so we're, we're dealing with entities that have no they're not thinking the way we're thinking no. nothing is off limits to them and so if they're allowed to go forth they're not going to stop at anything and that's what people have a hard time grasping uh, you know, when you talk about people that are so evil, they could kill millions of people and then go down and have a drink and go to sleep. I mean, you, you can't imagine people being that evil, but we saw them. You know, they was the whole Third Reich, essentially. And so I guess, you know, uh, we're dealing with Satanists who are, 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 are dabbling in all these powers, and it's, it's really getting messed up. And, and, you know, with the you know, bathroom wars and all this other stuff, and at the same time, that's, you know, I see the darkness in a death rattle because I see us going toward the light. And that's, you know, a change of the guard. And I just feel like they're, what they're doing is they're, they're making an all-out last-ditch effort to get something like a new world order. They don't have patience anymore. They don't have, they, they just seem to want what they want when they want it, but they seem to be able now to manipulate time, space, and now Bibles. Uh, to bend everything to their will, to the reality they want, which is an open, satanic, uh, pedophiliac, black magic, huge sorcery society that enslaves all people and is unfair, right, Mike? Unfair to all people and uh, forces yeah. people to, into slavery of taking the mark, uh, you know, taking a, a, a chip or, or a, a, the, a, you know, and, and you, you know, the Bible says worshiping the beast, you know, the Antichrist 666 of Revelation and the, the, in Daniel 7 and 11. And it just seems it's pretty scary. But I know God raises up, you know, the good comes because you see this, what, what the Bible's talking about is the very last, you know, small period of time before everything changes. That's the good news. You know, meaning it, it, it changes forever. It goes back, it goes to, to the light, to good, to the new Jerusalem, new heaven and new earth. All the tears are gone, all the past is gone, and people are restored and, and uh, you know, smiles return to their faces. And the, this bad, horrible age, the, the worst age of man ever, is finally over, and people can rejoice. Uh, but, yeah, that the last couple years would be just pretty much hell on earth. Pure hell, right? Well, yeah, and I mean, if anybody doubts what you said, I mean, all they need to do, Zeph, is to look at the dedication ceremony to the opening of the tunnel in Switzerland oh. and see how overtly satanic, oh. I mean, it was, it was an incredibly satanic invocation, worse than anything I've ever seen in the public arena. Why would Switzerland use an image of Lucifer coming out of this tunnel, out of this mountain? Okay, and I'll just point out right now, the, the workers are down to their underwear. This is outdoors in, in front of the public, 
the zombie workers are now stripped down to their underwear and it's becoming more ritualistic. There's a group of men coming out in more traditional Swiss garb of red and white with large sticks. Now they're horns, aren't they? Yes, and then oh, and look, I the devil is right there. And now the devil has emerged in the back of the formation as a goat. It's wearing a goat head, like a ram. So wearing a goat outfit with the ram's horns and I everything. saw him. What are those things? Those are Egyptian scarabs. They those, are, those are for d d uh, devouring the dead. All right, I thought, I thought, what are these beetles? They look like three big beetles. They're Egyptian scarabs. And there's three of them, just like there was three spirits and the three miners that got sacrificed in the beginning. Put this together with CERN. Yes. What that's is what going I thought. on in that's Switzerland? Exact, that's what I thought, What too. are they doing, Doc, in Switzerland? What, what I want people to understand is there are powerful leaders in the world in the Western world, because I think this is really confined to the Western world. They are begging Lucifer to come out of the abyss. Listen to me, people. Satan's church is calling for their God to come into the world. Why isn't the church of God calling for our God to come to the world? Lucifer's people are beseeching him. They're carrying out demonic rituals. They're drilling holes into the center of the earth to release him from the abyss. They want him to come onto the surface of the planet. It is called the tribulation. It's going to happen soon. This is why Jesus said, if the days were not shortened, no flesh would survive. We, we cannot even comprehend the depth of the wickedness that's going to be turned loose on the planet. It's coming fast. It, it, this is coming really fast. The end of days is staring us in the face. Oh, and it was just so, I mean, even worse than the Super Bowl. You're right in what you're saying. Well, the Super Bowl, you know, was bad, but this is... These are basically, here they are bringing in a parade, you know, format, abominations out of the pit. These are abominations. You know, the baby with wings and things like that. These are abominations. And they're bringing them onto the surface of the earth. And all the people there, and Merkel's there, and all the New World Order people, probably the Bilderbergers there, they're all go, they're partying down, yeah, you know. I want to remind everyone, uh, Zach, now what we're talking about really is highlighted in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and it's talking about the coming of the lawless one, or that wicked one. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9, it says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth, and so be that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion. Now, God didn't say what form that strong delusion was going to take, but he did say he was going to allow strong delusion to come upon this earth for those that refuse to love the truth and so be saved. So what we're discussing seems like it's the beginning of that happening. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the conundrum we have is, and this, this is, baffles me, you know, where people that, that were trusted people, you know, that were Bible teachers and taught all kinds of things and gave sermons and traveled around doing ministry and, you know, were kind of official, you know, good guys of the cause here of Christ. Um... Uh, to see them kind of put the kibosh on any investigation and say, you know, it, uh, God will not change his word. You've got my word on that. And um, so we see people saying, thank you, pastor. Thank you, pastor. And then about four down, there's a gal that says, you just can't see it. That's all. And I felt like going, oh, thank God for you, sister. You, they, she said, they just can't see it. They, they don't see it. Now, there's a lot of discussion going around, Mike, about, uh, you know, 
the wheat and the tares, people that can't see your tares, the people that can't see your wheat. When they start insulting us, uh, then I wonder what that spirit is. Why, why is there a spirit of derision, a spirit of um, hatred? There's also a thing called denial where people just don't want to deal with it. Or they right. tr trick themselves. They just don't want to... They don't want to get to the part of even considering it. They just want to sort of didactically say, uh, no, God can, can preserve his word. He has through all these centuries of where it's been fought over. It's been, you know, you know they, they're going to preserve it just as it was written, as, as we have it, as it was edited, as, as we, our final version came out. And, um, you know, the, this, it can't be, so therefore I'm not going to investigate because I already know the truth. You know, this, this is just a trick. And you're all deceived. Uh, what, what did this, this one pastor say? He goes, it's a hoax. You're all being hoaxed. And uh, don't you get it? It's a hoax. God's word never changes. And then, and then there's this one, you know, kind of little voice in the midst of all these people going, thank you, pastor. Thank you. You know, and, uh, you know how they, you have a thread on Facebook. Everyone's saying, oh, thank you. Yeah, God's word can never change. I, I rejoice in the Lord. You know, thank God Satan tried to trick us. He might have tricked some people, but... You know, and remember, we're going to have to pray for those ones who think they're seeing changes because they're really deceived. And uh, so there's this one gal, like I say, she goes, it's that they don't see. That's all. That's why they're saying it. They, they, to them, it's impossible that anything like this is happening. The accusations are flying, the shaming, the guilt, the, you know, guilting and shaming people into confessing, even if they don't believe it, just to get the, just because they want to be liked, they don't want to be rejected, they don't want to be made into outcasts. If you don't see it, it must mean that you're the kind of person that has a real hard time with stuff like this, that it just wants whatever this is, whatever you've been given to deny any kind of change, anything that, that's happened, say it's always been that way and convince yourself and then go on the war path. But you're talking about too many credible people here. You made a little mistake. You're talking about too many reasonable, credible, good people whose memories are perfectly well intact. You want to go up against all of them? Do so at your own peril. You're wrong, and you're wrong not to at least say this. And this is my message to the, to the scoffers and you people doing YouTubes. This is not like, you know, the round earth, flat earth people back and forth. I mean, it is big like that, but it isn't that kind of arguing. This is people um, denying that's right in your face and right in all our faces and then and then impugning good people as 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 falling for the deception but which is that something's going on but the the few people doing these YouTubes which by the way nobody on YouTube has done one on this that has refuted it because all they've done is gone back in the record that exists which has been changed and said you see it was always Bob. You see, it was always Wolf. All the past, you know, I've, I've, all those guys, they're wrong because they don't address the issue. The issue is it's changed, and then it's all the way, all the way back. It's back in uh, ancient Bibles, back in the 1611. It's, in, it's all over the place. It seems they get angry if you even bring the topic up. Like there's some kind of a, a gate. They want, like they're a gatekeeper to keep us from looking at something. All in the name of saving us from the ultimate deception. They're going to save us all. That is seriously sick. Memory is right. You, you, you folks out there, your, memory, your memories are right. It, you're just going to have to stand up to this, you know, I guess the pressure, especially around Christian circles. You know how people, you know how we love to shame each other, right? You're not really a brother. <laughs> So that's going wild. And um, you heard it here first. I warned, right? I warned everybody what's going to happen. <laughs> and it's real nasty. And uh, this is nastier than any argument that you've ever seen in your life. There's one other thing, too, that we have to look at, you know, that we have to remember what God said in Genesis chapter 11, uh, right at the Tower of Babel. Well, some have theorized that the Tower of Babel was an, an ancient uh, supernatural portal. Uh, whether it's true or not, I don't know. I couldn't necessarily doubt that. But what we do know is that in Genesis chapter 11, verse 6, and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they began to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So they were at a point then that right. if 
they could imagine it or even think about it like we're discussing these subjects today they could do it had not god intervened and it looks like with this sermon we're actually back at that point now where you mentioned tampering with the fabric of space tampering with time but they are at threshold of being able to do whatever they've imagined to do i don't even call it the mandela effect anymore because that's more uh play time that's more you know just just uh interesting kind of weird stuff uh this is more you know this is war this is a big story this is but but here's my question don't you think that people have been given eyes to see and others haven't could it be that yes 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 absolutely and that's why jesus said that he who has an ear to hear let him hear because he knew that when he said that there would be people that would hear him but not really understand what he was saying but then there would be people that would hear him and comprehend it and take to heart what he was saying and those were the people that he was specifically talking to when he said that he that has an ear let him hear so you're correct there are people that can look at this situation and go into denial and then there are people and say wait a second something's wrong here and right. I don't need to anybody else to approve me or to tell me I'm right or anything, but I can, I know what it said, and I don't care what you say, okay? Yeah. Because I know what it said, personally, okay? I know what it said. I know you know what it said. I mean, if anyone's going to know, you're going to know. So, Mike, my question is, could this be used to make us go crazy, like some kind of attack? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it could be used to call into question our sanity, especially when uh, these things have been demonically changed going all the way back to the very origins. Mm -hmm. But now you, you can tell that it's not of God because of little cracks like you, you mentioned. Now anything that God does is perfect. Perfect. Exactly. This is not perfect. It's no, not it's, perfect. It's, it's, it's very powerful, but it's, but it's imperfectly done. Right, right, okay. right, right, right. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we know that that, you know, that is the source of that would be a satanic power that would be able to do that, you know, be able to change it in a dramatic way, but imperfectly. So well, it's all witchcraft. Not of God, but it's, yes. it's, it's all witchcraft. I mean, even CERN is witchcraft. So the whole thing is witchcraft. And, you know, I, I've known about powerful witchcraft and sorcery, being able to, to move planets around, to move stars around the sky, you know, things like that. You know, same kind of stuff we're seeing here. There's a lot of people say that God would never allow his word to be changed. What do you say, Mike, to those people out there who feel like if they can see this, they're saying, is God letting his word be changed or is it a deception? I mean, how do we, how do we think about that? Well, actually, God's word is not changed. You know, it's immutable. It is an immutable law. But what has been written down for us to read has been changed. Yeah, but right. you know, God himself and his law is not being altered and is not changed whatsoever. He meant exactly what he said, that it's not changed whatsoever. But the, the, the instrument that's of, where that word has been written down, that's being altered now to try to deceive. We're seeing right now deception that, well, it appears that it was always like this, and we know that it wasn't. We know it wasn't, yes. We know it wasn't, okay, we know that it wasn't. Now we have even Christians that are starting to say, well, you guys are just zapped out crazy. Because look, it's written right here. Yeah, it is written there, but it always it wasn't always written there. And, Sorry. And, about and that. the verse and the verse there that works is, you know, a brother will turn in brother for death. I mean, you take you you yes. amplify that out enough, and they're crazy. And, and this, I believe, is is starting here, but it's just beginning to go. That's why I don't want to call it the Mandela effect, because it's it's so much more than than just like the last few years. Someone would say. Well, I noticed that, you know, something changed on a TV show. Something changed on uh, a label, uh, Captain Crunch. I mean, these are silly things, right? And so it didn't get too far. You'd, they'd kick that around and say, wow, that's weird. Oh, what? And then it, and they'd leave it at that. What we're talking about is so much more intense, so much bigger of a topic that it's unfair to call it the Mandela effect or anything like that because they have ideas there that, you know, there's dimensional shifting and dimensional blending and all that. Who cares what the mechanism is? The fact is, it's going on and it's huge. It's not some little curio on somebody's YouTube called the Mandela effect. 
You're talking about cosmic changes meant to, made to look a certain way to deceive people and to um, also, you're the second person that I've heard, Mike, talk about this, uh, the coming of the Antichrist with all lying signs and wonders uh, that would deceive even the very elect if that were possible, uh, that, that, that uh, through, through all blasphemy and through these amazing signs, people will worship the beast. I mean, that's, you're, you're talking about the kickoff of that. Right? right. So that's big. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yes. Okay. So, so we're talking yes. the kickoff of the end times. So that I'm wondering, you know, am I in a world now where people that I thought I knew are not the same people? And right, and they really are terrors. It's it's very confusing. So I'm going to turn it over to you for a, a bit here. And what's your take on on the two different kinds of people? Ones that do see, one that don't. Are we all still friends, or what's happening? I think I would lean toward a spirit of delusion uh, in people's minds. It, it's really uncomfortable when you take the uh, fundamental underpinnings of society and you, you start to alter it. Now, I don't want to make light of this, but when you're talking about product labels changing or S being removed or something being spelled a little bit differently, well, that's a little unsettling, but it's, it's not really significant compared to when we're talking about the Word of God and those changes that we're seeing there. Right. I mean, this is the fundamental underpinning of our society. This is extraordinarily important. This is the ancient landmark. This is what sets all the landmarks. Now, if you make that movable, uh, you have nothing for which to guide. I mean, you're, you have a compass that basically doesn't give you any direction. Uh, because this is the direction for our society. I mean, many of the people who helped found this country were involved in Scripture. I mean, of course, there was a lot of other people as well, and their influence was part of that as well. But generally speaking, at the founding of this country, there was much more of a mindset as to what God's will was, and it was all centered around what the Scripture had to say. And many of our laws were associated with that. Now, I realize there were other people that were Masons and everything else that were involved in that, and there was a satanic agenda even going back then. But our society as a whole was much more focused on biblical morality. And when you begin to change that, uh, there's nothing left in our society. I mean, there's nothing left for people to hold on to. And particularly, I'm thinking in terms of young people who haven't got the opportunity yet to really get their foundations intact. Uh, I think they're going to really need to hold fast to people that have some age and can remember what things used to be like and even what the scriptures had to say. And it's... He, uh, this, no, no. Go ahead, go ahead. Finish no, that thought. No, you're good. No, you're good. Well, I was just going to say that, you know, remember, you know, this, you bring up a good point here. People have to start revering the elders again rather than throwing them under the bus. Young people tend to throw older people under the bus. It's just a learned bad habit, you know, in our society. And, and, and I'm, I realize just from... You know, getting older myself, that I get treated differently from young people. Or I just and I relate more to them. I feel like I'm more on their page, and yet I'm not being treated the same. And um, you know, it's kind of like ah, uh, you know, they they think they know everything when they don't know what we know because they weren't around. They need to rely on us now for our memories, and uh, I think that maybe that's a good thing um, because we we can we can help in that regard. Um, so that's, that's all. That's just, it's, it's a great observation you make that, you know, the young ones are going to have to rely on the old ones for vision because I'm telling you right now, the pastors in the, in the official, you know, commercial church or whatever you want to call it, which I think Jesus would hate, but anyway, uh, they're, they're being told, um, there's, this is just a kook thing on the internet. It's just another psy people I've, I've seen them call it psyop. And, and all kinds of other things, of, you know, psychological operations. Um, and I just, I look at them, I'm like, you know, this is a technology that actually changes history. You're, you're dealing with time now, it changes times, and it's changing, you know, while we're changing laws very rapidly to, a, to, to bring in this new age, this new paradigm. And now we're seeing with the Bible that, like you say, the very foundation, it's just right now, it's just a little bit on the edges, but changing it more and more and more. Is that the pattern we're in where it's going to be more and more and more until finally we don't recognize it? Uh, 
I, I think you hit on you hit the nail on the head, and I'm just going to I want you to kind of riff on this for a bit. You hit the nail on the head when you said they want to remove uh, our cultural foundations, you know, icons, uh, art, churches, and the Bible itself. If they can change it, if they can if they can change it, they can ruin it. Hence, getting rid of. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to, you know, they're getting rid of flags, they're getting rid of, uh, you know, Ten Commandments, they're getting rid of everything that was our history. They're wiping it out and wanting to replace it with something else. Go ahead. Right. Right. Now, that's exactly correct. Uh, and this, as we know, those who study this, uh, which you could say alternate history, or the people that worked alongside uh, people that were members of our society that had another agenda and that agenda was to change the world that we live in into something closer to their heart's desire. And I'm going to say their hearts are being uh, definitely coerced and molded by Satan himself. So we see a, a move toward the destruction of family. We see the dissolution and death of 50 to 60 uh, million kids, you know, as far as abortion is concerned. Uh, we're seeing the promotion of homosexual lifestyles as normal, which don't reproduce. They don't have the ability to reproduce and so forth, at least not through, through natural means. You'd have to go through cloning or in vitro or something like that. But there's not a production. So you're changing all the fundamentals, fundamental uh, moorings of our society. Well, that's the preferred. Something else. That's the preferred in our culture. Um, there was a guy, they were having an equality conference, and the only people that were not allowed in were, would be uh, white heterosexuals were banned. All of our cultural norms have been changed. The bathroom more, that's another one. It's all about changing all the customs, changing the form, changing the norm. And then, and then you know, high art is uh, the, uh, the, the, the little parade, the little whatever, uh, the rolling out of the uh, Underground Railroad. In Switzerland, I mean, that's basically um, considered the high art now. B abomination upon abomination. We're doing it at the Super Bowl. Everything is being profaned. The Bible is being profaned. Uh, not God's word, but the Bibles, especially the big one, the KJV, which is the kind of the granddaddy of them all, right? So, Right, right. Uh, <laughs> well, and I think, I think we, we talked about this before, but I think it's worth repeating, and one of the things that we would notice, and it was mentioned in Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, where it talked about the coming of this Antichrist, and it says he shall think to change times and laws. Now, those are fundamental moorings of society. You know, the times is appointed seasons. Uh, the laws are decrees, and this is what we're looking at and what you and I are discussing. They're making an attempt to try to change God's decrees as they were written down in the Bibles that we read. Now, as you mentioned, the Word of God has not changed. The Word of God is still what it always was. The medium upon which it's been written down in these pages has been altered because you and I can remember it said something else not that long ago. And, and yes. people are having a problem admitting that. The thing is, we agree across the board, those who can see, on about, you know, 90% of it. Right, and there might be a little area for human error, for well, you know, for memory where you may not be as familiar with the scripture. Like, for example, I know I didn't see stuff. I know I didn't see the heaven, and I do. I know I didn't see bottles. I know I didn't see uh, in earth as it is in heaven. I am 100% uh, positive. You know, I would I would give any kind of testimony, lie detector, whatever you want. Um, and then there's other scriptures, like for example, the one in Luke 17:34. Um, where it says two men, and I've had numerous people write me saying they do not remember two men being in a bed. One man is taken, one is taken, the other left. We mentioned that one the other day in Luke chapter 5 about take up thy couch. I don't ever remember couch. I remember no. bed. Yeah. I remember pallet. But I don't remember couch. No, it wasn't there. It take wasn't up. There. No, it wasn't there. I mean, that, that, that is a word that's just out of character, period. It's out of character, and, and for the new King James to have wineskins, but the old, you know, King James to have uh, bottles, no, sir. That is absolutely not correct. And, 
and um, they can bring all the word studies they like. They can bring me articles from 50 years ago of doing, uh, talking about how, you know, they don't like the word bottles in there or whatever. The fact of the matter is there never was bottles in there. So all the Bible studies, all the evidence that you bring forth is moot. It doesn't matter because if it wasn't there, it wasn't there. And that gets us more into the subject of, you know, end times deception. So the next question is, Mike, you know, this is what really is, uh, you know, on all of our minds. Don't you think that this constitutes entering into that last stretch of time? Yes. Yes, I think that uh, what we're seeing now, and I, I mentioned this before when you and I were talking, but, and this is something that's not preached about, among Christians and in the body of Christ, today I, I, I discern that people act like the time that God has given people to repent is an infinite time blank. In other words, you can always repent. Well, first of all, that's not true. Repentance is granted. And we see that in the story of Esau. You know, Esau was sorry what he had done, but his, his sorrow did not produce repentance. So God's repentance is a gift that God gives. The scriptures point to a time when God is no longer striving with men. It happened also in the, you know, in the book of Genesis before the flood. It also talks about the times of the Gentiles being fulfilled in the book of Romans, indicating that it's a finite amount of time. When Jesus said in John chapter 9, verse 4, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night comes when no man can work. Speaking of a time when there isn't going to be able, you're not going to be able to do work, and I take it that we're talking Christian works. We're coming to that point. Now, one of the other indicators, because 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 says, you know, that day we gather back to Christ concerning our, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering to meet him. I beg you, brethren, not to be quickly shaken in mind or excited by spirit of war to the effect that the day of the Lord has come and that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed. So Paul is telling us that before Jesus returns or the day of the Lord or the time we gather back to Christ will not happen until we see these things take place. The falling away, which is already underway, and also the wicked one being revealed. Now, how is he revealed? In the changings of times and laws. And ultimately, when the stage is properly set, the man himself incarnate will come on the stage. And I think we're getting very close to that. Okay. Let's go over what we've seen so far. <laughs> Right in your face, folks, you know, just to recap here, the heaven makes no sense in the very first <laughs> verse of Genesis, yeah, the heaven, and then repeated throughout, just as if to just insult you to your face, to just put it right in your face, right in Genesis 1, right in the first sentence. You know, it's just, uh, it's got that Satan signature all over it. You know, we humans are also involved in the process somehow. We're involved in fighting the devil, right? We're involved in spiritual warfare. The, these, these changes are meant for us to vex us, to vex the body. Secondly, we talked about uh, persecution now because it's biblical, you know, dealing with the Bible, dealing especially with the King James. We're going to see this rise, so we're going to see enmity between um, people that see it and people that say it's always been that way. Well, you can't have Paul talking about three heavens and chapter 2 in Genesis talking about heavens plural yeah. and then chapter 1 speaking of heaven singular. Uh, there's a contradiction. You can't do that. So you talked about something last time that is God taking his hand off the uh, Bible because this is the time of the lawless one. Well, you know, it looks like this deception has begun, and that is a part of it. Now, when we look at John chapter 1, it's very clear, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. So Jesus Christ, the person of Jesus Christ, is the Word of God. And we know he does not change, because he said that in Hebrews, uh, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the Word of God has not changed, does not change, will not change. The mediums that we're looking at where, the, where his word has been written down have been altered. Right, so we can say that that's what we've come to. I, 
I thought it was just an anomaly, you know, once or twice, and now it seems like every other day, and here's another established fact, this is progressive, that over the last, I think I've been dealing with the subject all of two weeks, I think I basically was thrown into the deep end of the pool, you know what I mean, and uh, I had to start swimming, so I've been at it for a couple of weeks. In those two weeks, there were new discoveries all the time, including when you called me yesterday. And so it's progressing along. Something is not exactly right. And there are people out there that can remember that it did say God created the heavens and then the earth. I'm, and I'm, everything else fits perfectly. I had to memorize it myself, so I know that like the Lord's Prayer. It's always been the same in Matthew 6. And so there's, there's glitches around, you know, anomalous glitches. As soon as someone discovers a proof of something, it, it changes. Let's say you've done research about... Um, Oh, a product of, let's say, J.C. Penny, And so they'll go back and find evidence of P-E-N-N-Y. You know, J.C. Penny on sale, you know, a sale from 1963 or something, you know, in an old newspaper clipping. And those are all over the Internet. Then they'll go back to find that same newspaper clipping, and they're all gone. You know? And so we've seen that kind of thing happening, too. That's why I say to people, uh, you, you know, I was wondering today... What if we get here today, you and me, Mike, and then, um, you know, it, it says heavens again. <laughs> we would, you know, and we tell people, it didn't say that yesterday. And we, it starts looking like insanity again. Well, it, it doesn't say it right now. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. It doesn't say it in the King James Bible where I'm reading. So. Right. There's some other spirit at work here, kind of a... A spirit of deception. Because, see, I can't just relax anymore. You know, like last night was a good example. I just couldn't, I just kept wondering what else was in there. I just wanted to jump in there. I knew I needed to rest. But I just, I'm wondering what else is going to change the next five minutes. You know, I'm not, it, is that what they want? You know, to make us feel more unstable. We can't trust uh, the words. We can't trust uh, our King James Bible. We can't, you know, our icons and our laws are being, and our time, our times, all being changed. You know, so surely this must be the end. Well, it's, it's clear to me, and even just looking at how uh, God is mentioned or the name God is talked about and when he's referred to as he or his, um, it's, you know, done so with lowercase, whereas in the New King James, it's all uppercase letters, which is a spirit of wanting to deny the deity of Christ. Now, I don't know the technology how they were able to do all this. I think it really has more to do with dark art, even than technology or a combination of the two. Mm -hmm. But certainly something has changed here, and it's not adding up with what we remember, and it's also not adding up with what even makes sense in the text. How are we going to do all that we're supposed to do? When so many are forsaking you and people are going into hiding and they're afraid the ship is sinking. What do we do, Lord? Do we abdicate? Do we turn this whole world over to the devil and just let him have his way? Do we pay off all our bills and sold away a couple reserves in the bank? Buy a little farm and escape and try to ride out the storm hoping a better day will come? Do you just give up? How can the Christian remain sane? How can he keep his... Fortitude. How can he be objective? How can he be rational in an age that's falling apart? Lord, where do we stand now? <laughs> and dear friend, you've got to hear what the Holy Spirit said to me. Just five little words, but so powerful, they awakened in me a glorious new hope and faith, and I woke up shouting. And those five little words that blazed in my heart were these. God has everything under control. God has everything under control, and we are under his control, so we are not afraid of the devil. It is the fear of the Lord that's the beginning of wisdom, and God's message is this. I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. You and I 
and everything that touches us is now under his control. No matter how things look in this drunken world, all things are still working together to everyone who loves God. And called according to his purpose, let the fabric of society disintegrate. For the true child of God, everything is under control. It doesn't matter. Nothing can harm you. He said, look up and rejoice and be happy. The future is under his control. God has everything pre-programmed. He knows the exact moment that Christ will return. The final tribulation, the judgments, the battle of Armageddon are all on his calendar, and he's blocking them off one at a time. And the God who controls all of heaven and earth says to us, Christian, spirit-filled, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as small dust in my balance. <laughs> the nations of the world are just a drop in the bucket. All nations are as nothing before me. They are less than nothing. Don't worry about worldly powers. I've got it all programmed. 